It is now five o'clock. We will begin the workshop for the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, December 3rd, 2013. I would like to remind everyone this is being televised live tonight. Uh, we would like to send our prayers out to Alderman Green. She is under the weather tonight, so everyone please keep uh, her in your prayers, please. At the meeting, the prayer would be by myself and Vice Mayor, you have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please review over the minutes for November 5th public hearing and November 5th regular meeting for our vote on Thursday night. We'll start with old business. Second reading, Ordinance 2013-20, an ordinance of the City of Laverne to amend Title IV, Chapter 3 of the Laverne Municipal Code to establish an updated occupational safety and health program plan, <coughs> excuse me, devise <coughs> rules and regulations and to provide for a safety director and the implementation of such program plan. We discussed this at great length. This is something that we have to do through the state. Um, this is second reading. If we have any questions, we can get Miss Cheryl up here. I'm sure she'll be happy to help us answer any of the questions if you have any questions or concerns regarding this. Seeing none, I'll continue to move on. Number five is second reading, Ordinance 2013-21. An ordinance to amend the 2013-2014 fiscal year general fund bu budget for fire protection and control. Again, this is the second reading on this. If we have any questions, Ms. Phyllis, Bruce, any of them will be happy to answer questions regarding the second reading of this. Huh? We, we, we got a discussion item later about the actual That's fire it. department yeah. purchase, so we can talk about that then. Okay. Uh, the one thing I do want to note on here, uh, it says uh, public hearing. We found out just two or three weeks ago, actually, that on budget amendments, you do not have to have a public hearing right. uh, on budget amendments. And we've always done that in the past, uh, but we, you know, we will save the city money if we don't have public hearings just because of advertising requirements and things like that. So we do not have a public hearing scheduled for Thursday night, uh, and we do not plan to have any more for budget amendments. Now, for the actual budget approval that we do every spring, uh, obviously there are still requirements there. So we're just uh, we're going to change our procedures there when it comes to public hearings for amendments. Any questions? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, I will move forward with our consent agenda items. We have several on here. <coughs> First, A, approved recommendations for city bids and purchases. Number one, I'm very happy about, is our small diameter water line replacement project. Mr. Bill Griggs is with us tonight. Good evening. Last week we took bids on replacing the small diameter water lines in uh, Laverne. To the best of our knowledge, these are the, all the water lines that are less than six inch. Mm -hmm. Not going to guarantee it, but I've interviewed everybody in the water department three times. Uh, Kyle and I have gone over it repeatedly. And to the best of our knowledge, this takes care of all the water lines that are less than six inch. Uh, when we put the budget together, there were 22,000 feet. Uh, over the course of developing the plans, we ended up beating 24,000 feet. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 feet of water line has been added to this project. We uh, had six bids. Uh, there's a bid tabulation that shows everybody's bid, and I hope it's in your packet. Uh, the low bidder was Hawkins and Price out of War Trace. They've done work here in the city before. Uh, I recommend a, uh, th that budget there on the right. Their, their bid was two million five hundred sixty-seven thousand seven hundred eight dollars and fifty cents. That'll let us adjust a contingency budget, and we'll still have two hundred thirteen thousand dollars in contingency. So the two million seven eighty-one thousand is what was in the original budget to start with, and when we sold bonds, so we're within budget there. Uh, just so to remind you of what the pieces include. Uh, when when the con all the work's going to be in the street, 
unless something comes up that may, we have to get out of the street. We'll, we'll lay a new water line, uh, reconnect all the services to the existing houses. Uh, the water department asked, asked us to add a couple of streets where that have been replaced in the past, but the, you, the connections were still on the old line. So there's a couple of streets in here where there's an old line and a new line in the street and they were never switched over. So this project's gonna switch the houses to the new line and we'll kill the old line. It includes fire hydrants. Uh, the fire department worked with us to locate the fire hydrants. We're also gonna install some fire hydrants along Mercer Road where there's eight and 12 inch lines, but there are no fire hydrants. So we, we've had a dose to the project. We've gotten a permit from the Tennessee Department of Transportation for the fire hydrants, Mercer Road, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation across the creek on Nelson Avenue, Nelson Drive, a permit from the Corps of Engineers across the same creek on the Nelson Drive, and we've got a permit from the CSS Railroad to run down Ed Miller Drive. So we had to deal with four permits, but we're in good shape. Uh, also to remind you, when the project's over, uh, included in this price is to repave the street edge to edge. And we've worked with uh, the street department on that on where to stop. And uh, we don't want to just stop abruptly. We'll take it another 15 or 20 or 30 feet. If we're close to an intersection, we'll go all the way through the intersection with the new paving. And the contractor is required to cut down the existing paving where the t old paving and new paving meet. So we hope we'll have a smooth joint there. And so uh, the project's divided into four priorities. The project is 400 days long, which is more than a year. So again, we've worked with uh, Bruce and the water department and, and the city engineer. We divided the, pro the city up into four, the project up into four priorities, A, B, C, and D. And I've got a drawing here if, if you might want to see one. And uh, the contractor's required to finish everything in A, including cleaning up the yards, paving the streets if weather allows, and then before we can go to B. And area B, do the same thing, fix it fix people's yards, they try everybody over, pay the streets, and go to C, then go to D. So it's going to be an inconvenience to the public, but dividing it up into priorities, we hope that's going to minimize the, the inconvenience to each individual neighborhood. Otherwise, wherever he started, their streets would be put, torn up for 400 days, and we didn't want to do that. So we're trying, trying to accommodate the general public. And this it was a big, big part of our last ISO. <coughs> that we will be accomplishing there. So not only are we getting fire protection with the water lines, it also is gonna help lower, hopefully, by the time the ISO comes in, we will have a lower ISO rating too. Now the, the contract includes a new service line from the new water main to the existing water meter. So unfortunately, we're gonna be in some people's yards, mm -hmm. but just be up to their meter. Okay. All right, any questions? Any questions? Long right. time coming. Thank you. Thank you. Soil source infield mix for ball fields at Veterans Memorial Park. Miss Felicia. Yes. Um, in talking with David and AC, the parks guys have decided to do this project in house. Mm -hmm. So this is to get the, we're getting the infield mix or the dirt they need straight from the distributor. We're not going to have a middleman to pay extra, we're going to get bypass. So we'd like to go ahead and get this up approval so we can get this started while they're have some downtime from ball. I know they've already tore one field completely off, but mm -hmm. we just need to start getting dirt in so they can fix them back. We will come back at a, when it gets closer to time. We will come back for the top layer of what's that called? Safe, Safe coat. coat. We don't yeah. want to walk away. I was going to say silk yeah. coat, and I thought that's not that's the streets. <laughs> <laughs> but the safe coat, we'll come back for that, and we'll go to the straight to the distributor for that too. We're going to try to bypass the middleman. Excellent. It'll save, save the city money. It'll way. save the city oh, yeah. money doing that. Yeah. Excellent. Any questions? Okay. Next, sole source.
hub work software for water, sewer, street, fleet, and stormwater departments. Yes, this is a software system and um, it will not only help them, but it'll help the residents because the residents could, there'll be an online model where they can go online and put any re requests into or any problems or issues that they have. It should help everybody and we be able to track this things too. Once before. <laughs> So we discussed this. That was at your retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was discussed at the retreat and it was put in the budget and yes. it was divided over all these departments. There will be a yearly maintenance of $33,762 for the software, which will be divided each year after, after this year. Any questions on that? Sounds good. All right. Number four, state contract purchase vehicle for fire chief. I personally talked to the gentleman at Ford of Murfreesboro, or Chevy of Murfreesboro, and he gave me the name of the guy that told them that, because the state contract did end in October, but they assured us because they had vehicles on the ground, they could sell those to us at the state price. So that vehicle is not going to have to be ordered. It is at the dealership now. And then we can go ahead and take it to Truckers, which is on state contract for all the emergency equipment. And we need to go ahead and get that moving so that it's ready before G before January one for the new fire chief. Excellent. Any questions? All right, next, approved meeting schedule for 2014. Bruce, I'll let you go over that. Y'all can also review it between now and Thursday night, but I think mainly just, I just did something to my tablet. There are a few months, uh, you know, where we're gonna have to look at changes uh, to the regular schedule. Uh, January and February, I think are fine. March is, is standard as is April. When you come to May, you've got the uh, Rutherford County primary uh, election on May the 6th. So we're proposing to move the Mayor Alderman meeting to that Thursday the 8th. Uh, and I believe it's just a primary for the, uh, for the Republican Party. I think the Democratic Party is going to do a caucus. Uh, if you continue on, we don't really have any changes uh, until you get to August. Uh, the, the workshop for the August meeting is actually scheduled for uh, July 31st, uh, but the normal meeting date would have been August the 5th, which is always our national night out on that Tuesday. We would have normally moved that to <coughs> Thursday, August the 7th, but that is the date of the state and federal primaries as well as the county election. Uh, so about the only thing we could do there is move the regular meeting uh, to August the 14th. Uh, September is a standard month. October should be a standard month. Uh, and then you come to November, we have our city election as well as the state and federal election on November the 4th. Typically what we do there is we move the uh, city council meeting two weeks after that to allow the election commission time to to finalize the uh, the votes and everything so we would have the workshop on november the 13th and then the meeting itself on the 18th uh, and then of course december we'll have to move the workshop and meeting uh, to the tuesday thursday like we are this this month uh, due to the thanksgiving holiday so those are the major changes uh, to the schedules uh, i believe i've got most all of the boards on here uh, the department heads forwarded me their proposed dates for all of the boards and committees, so they should be on the list. So if you have any questions or or anything, just just let me know. Uh, I believe actually there was one other change that I failed to mention uh, October. for October, and we're actually going to do the back-to-back -back Tuesday, Thursday, uh, on October the seventh and ninth, uh, to help accommodate the schedule for the mayor. Uh, she has a little wedding to plan the weekend before, so. And that is our, as this group with the 
2010 election. I wanted everybody to be here for that last month, you know, together as, as the original crew. So, I hope y'all don't mind that. So, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know before Thursday. Any questions? Okay. Uh, C, approve consent to name change and assignment agreement with Wiser Consultants, LLC, and Wiser Company, LLC. We'll let Kyle explain this one. I think you can do better than I can. Uh, basically, I just got an email from Wiser. They, I think we've always referred to them as Wiser Company. Yeah. But... I guess over the years they've kind of not really branched out, but they've kind of separated themselves into two kind of different divisions. One's more mapping and stuff, and the other's the engineering side. So what they've done is kind of changed their name to Wiser Consultants LLC for the engineering and consulting <coughs> side, and then Wiser Company for the GIS stuff. And it, it's kind of mentioned, and you, you may have an email in your packet. I, I know you got the contract that's in there that kind of justifies, and that letter kind of justifies it too. They, seems like the local government side where they're doing the service like they do for us that it's going to be under wiser consultants llc where they have like federal um contracts to do some of this mapping and stuff they're doing it under wiser company llc so that's, that's basically what it is and i think evans had this contract probably for a month now maybe to so hopefully he's had a chance to look over it Nothing, nothing seemed major to me besides just changing the name and making sure that our existing contracts that we have, it's said Wiser Company, and just changes it over to Wiser Consultants, LLC. And to um, any of the stuff that they do as far as grants, it has to be very specific, doesn't it? It's got to be very specific, and they have actually pointed that out in the contract, that, and it's in that letter, I believe, too, mm -hmm. that they're pre-qualified with the state under the Wiser Consultants LLC at this point. I think that's kind of why they, they did the name change first, then submitted to the state to get mm -hmm. their pre-qualifications, and then now they're wanting to change it, you know, per contract since they're pre-qualified now. And that's about, unless Evan wants to add to it. That's, that's exactly Any questions? All right, moving on. Approved proposal from Croft and Associates to assist the city in acquiring property for the Hurricane Creek Greenway project. We basically received no proceed. Proceed with right away on the Greenway project and um, we've already met one tract or property owner. They're willing to donate the property to the west side of Near Shreveman Boulevard need to Pretty much going to have to get it negotiated, appraised, and a review appraisal, and that's following the state rules and guidelines of how you got to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically getting a proposal from Croft and Associates to, to do that work for us. And um, it's who we used on the Walden Road project, but that's, that's pretty much all there is to this one. And then the third track is the core property, which I'm working on getting them the information they need to, to do a land out grant for it. Okay. Now I'll take care of the three tracks we need. Excellent. Get that project <laughs> away. Any questions? Y'all are a quiet bunch tonight. Next, approve change order number four for the water treatment plant improvements project. This is the work that's ongoing at the water plant. He, uh, the contractor continues to sandblast and paint. It seems like every time he sandblasts something, we uncover uh, a <coughs> big surprise. Uh, he's now working in the old part of the plant because uh, Thomas had asked him to get the new part up running first and then switch over, and, and he agreed to do that. So he's working in the old part now. <coughs> There's a filter wall that you see when you first walk into the that part of the building. Apparently it had four or five or six coats of paint on it. And when he got all that paint off, the concrete wall is full of a bunch of little spider cracks. They're not a structural issue, they're not leaking. But uh, if we want to paint it, we want it to look good. It also revealed there's a lot of bug holes. A uh, bug hole is a term that when you pour concrete, 
and you strip the form off, it bunch of little <coughs> look like ball bearings, holes all all in. And the old paint had that covered up, so now that's exposed. So we asked the contractor to uh, uh, coat that with a special coating, and that's in your packet, I hope. It's called mortar clad. Mm -hmm. And then after he puts that on there to go ahead and repaint it, we've asked him not to paint it until he does that. So the cost of the painting is in the regular contract. The, the extra cost is for that mortar coat. Mm -hmm. And that was around uh, $3,500. Also, when he took out the old filters, there are four old filters in the old part and four filters in the new part. So we got eight filters. Each filter has a metal hood that they use when they backwash. In the new plant, we specified 10 years ago, 20 years ago, is we, we had that specified out of stainless steel. So it sandblasted good and painted good and it's back in service. The original part of the plant, when he sandblasted it, it apparently was out of uh, just common steel and it had rusted and corroded. And so when he sandblasted it, there's a lot of pit to go all the way through. And he needs to draw a vacuum on that when he's pulling the, when he's doing the backwash. So I met out on site with a uh, city manager and, and city engineer, and we talked about how to handle this. We thought about one, just repairing it, just weld plates over it. But there's a question where to stop, because the corrosion's all the way through it, and there's four different parts. And then if we welded it, you know, how does, how does that affect the warranty? and this and that and the other because once you put them back in they're set under that walkway that we all walk on when we go out there mm -hmm. so if the wells failed or the patch failed with we would have to get some equipment out there to pick that walkway up to get back to them and repair them or replace them in the future so we pretty well decided on re replacing them and we could replace them with common steel hoods like it was there or stainless steel hoods Difference in the price between stainless steel and common steel was less than a thousand dollars, two or three hundred dollars. So we decided on the stainless steel, and then we said that was going to put us over our contingency budget. So we talked about the possibility of the city buying it and having a contractor put it in. Talked about the possibility of Severn Trent buying it in their maintenance contract and have the contractor put it in. And then we got a price from the contractor to him to buy it and put it in. And they were all within a few dollars of each other. And we feel like for continuity's sake, it'd be cheaper and better coordinated to have a contractor buy it and put it in. That way he could coordinate the delivery, be under his bond, under his insurance, under his warranty. And it wouldn't be any question if they come and they're the wrong size or they come a week late or this or that or the other. So that, uh, that was $17,000 for those four hoods. But they'll be stainless steel and hopefully they'll last a long, long time. So you had those two change orders together, it's 20529 and we only had about $9,000 left in uh, the contingency. So if the city approves this change order, and I, and I hope you do, we'll have to see they'll have to transfer $11,591 from a different account into this account. So I wanted to make you aware of that, so that's the, the purpose of that last sentence. Any questions? Rust is rust. You can't change it. Right. Thank you. And I, I do have one question, and, and I think we may have discussed this, but just to clarify everything, once we get all these items fixed, we are going to set up a general maintenance program, I hope, for the water treatment plant, where we'll go in, assess, you know, keeping things up and running, and so we don't let it get this bad ever again. I, I think it'd be wise. I don't know if we need to come up with with something with Severn Trend or, you know. Basically what we're doing now is just kind of mm -hmm. 20 years of catch-up. It, it is. It absolutely is. But I would like for us to come up with some type of maintenance program, uh, just to keep this stuff checked. I mean, you can't have stuff rusting and getting holes. And, and then, like you said, look at what it's costing us to play catch-up. And really, I guess we probably need to do that on all buildings at some point. Hopefully, we, the near future, we have like a maintenance department. We would love to have that. That's, we're going to have several buildings now that we need to just stay on top of. All right. Any other questions or comments? Excellent. Thank you, Bill. All right. 
Next, approve additional streets for paving. Mayor Alderman, <coughs> back in June, the, the City Council approved a, a list of streets that you'll see there on the, in the memo. Uh, during the process of paving those streets, uh, they found that some additional streets uh, in Lake Forest were in pretty bad shape and really needed to be repaired as well. So uh, those are four additional streets, Mary Jo Martin Drive, Tammy Sue Drive, a uh, portion of East near Schreibman. Uh, all of those basically are, were being paid out of the letters of credit mm -hmm. uh, that we received from First Tennessee Bank for the uh, developers' phases. Uh, there was an additional street, uh, Fergus Road, that they'd had to do some, some patching on, uh, and that will end up coming out of State Street Aid. Um, the additional paving, along with the striping and, and casting adjustments, uh, totals right at $60,000, so that's really what needs to be approved okay. uh, in, in, in the recommendation. Our initial estimate for the paving in Lake Forest Estates, using the letters of credit, was $361,000. The final cost ended up being just over $480,000. Uh, but if you take these additional three streets, that's uh, right at forty-one dollars or $42,000 of that additional. So uh, we knew it would be higher or lower depending on the actual paving cost. They had to do more milling than they really expected uh, to dig it out and make it work well. So, uh, And then the um, initial estimate for the paving using State Street aid funds was $498,000. And our final cost ended up being approximately 412000 So we had budgeted a total of 500000 in State Street Aid. So we're under budget on that side of it. Um, we just wanted to get these additional streets approved, bring it back to council so you guys would be aware of the additional streets that were paved and get your approval on that as well. And that's another situation. We're playing catch up on streets as mm -hmm. well. phases back there mm -hmm. in Lake Forest. It wasn't just extra streets. We, we, they were somehow the Hoover didn't get it. I mean, they didn't pick up the streets that was back there and they did when we, when they paved it. So, uh, we had to get the cost analysis on that back in. So that's, that's the reason that come back to you. Any questions? Questions? All right, G, approve the recommendations of ESP Inc. <coughs> regarding the 2014 employee benefit changes and renewals. In your packets is a letter from Bob Shoup from ESP, uh, who we used for, for several years on our employee benefits package. Um, I'm not smart enough to understand everything that's in here, but uh, Basically, and, and there are going to be some changes to this um, before I go any further, we will need to move this down under new business okay. uh, because, uh, we, you know, with us taking over the uh, fire department mm -hmm. and making some changes there, we'll have to have some new numbers there. So okay. we should have an updated uh, uh, recommendation letter and everything by, by Thursday, so we'll need to move this down under new business. But essentially... From what I understand out of this uh, recommendation, uh, we're actually doing pretty well on our employee benefits. Uh, we're actually going to be saving money with who we are, we're proposing to go with um, because our expenses are going to decrease with the rebidding uh, that they've been looking at. And uh, so, it, you know, you can read the letter. It's in your packets. Uh, we will have more information for Thursday night. Excellent. Any questions? There's a lot of reading. Okay. Next is motion to appoint or remove board members, Historical Preservation Advisory Committee. There's still one vacancy open. And we've had this open now for 
Since February. Since last February, exactly. Um, are you going to be having any meetings? Uh, first a year. We'll get the holiday uh, pass. We're going to plan on having one first a year. I've been working on some stuff the last few weeks, and uh, I'm going to get with Bruce and uh, after the holidays and plan to have one. Some hopefully in Jan sometime in January, February at the latest. In the uh, proposed schedule, I believe we have one scheduled for March, and I think the other one is scheduled. It looks like September. Okay. So there's two that are, are scheduled for next year. I think that's all that we had. In well, there. March will be fine with me. All right, B. Local Emergency <coughs> Planning Committee. We have two tar two that are vacant. Storm Water. We're recommending Kenneth Perkins and IT uh, Glenn Green. Next, um, we have remove members from the stormwater appeals and advisory committee we had three meetings and they have not attended and we don't meet that often so we will be having three positions we will be voting to remove thomas crosno tracy harp and uh mr tom welch from those and there will be three positions that will be coming open Next, we have uh, the beer board. Michael Jolly, his expires at the end of December, and he will be, this won't be on the agenda. Right, the rest of these will not be on okay. the agenda for Thursday. So these are just kind of FYIs. Right. Um, the historical preservation has one term that expires. <coughs> Library board has Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Greenway. Mm -hmm. the Greenway has one that expires. Mr. Robert Lee. Then the historical preservation, Teresa Kennedy, hers expires. Library board, we have three terms that will expire, and that's Felicia Smith, Von Barr, and Lori Stanfield. All of, all of these that we're mentioning will be contacted to see if they wish to remain on these boards. Um, the local emergency planning committee, we have five terms that expire. Ricky McCormick, Robert Kimbrough, Burl Davis, Bruce Richardson, and A.C. Davis. And, sorry guys, y'all don't have a choice. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory will have one term, and that is Bruce Akba. Ak Ackbauer, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Then on your senior citizens, we have, now we have a vacant, right. will that be on there? Yeah, well, Bobby Noakes has resigned. Uh -huh. I don't have any applications at this time, so okay. we're going to advertise okay. both positions on channel three. Okay. Uh, and then the other term is Doug Schaefer. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll contact him and see if he wants to stay on there. Okay. And then we have one stormwater appeals and advisory, and that is Earl Garvin. And I do know he does want to remain on that one. Okay. All right. Next, first <coughs> reading, Ordinance 2013-22, an ordinance to amend Title VII of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the Laverne Fire Department. In preparing for the changeover to our own city department, uh, there are several sections in the municipal code, and, and specifically this Title VII, uh, that refer to the Laverne Fire Department Incorporated. Basically, all this uh, ordinance does is change that to just Laverne Fire Department uh, and takes off the incorporated portion. I believe there is one other change in here uh, where there was a reference to fire marshal that should have been different and uh, we changed that to fire official uh, to make that consistent with all of the other titles in here um, I think I 
think that's all of the changes in that ordinance. And I know y'all don't want to read over this and prior to Thursday night. Number nine, first reading, ordinance 2013-23, an ordinance to amend the Laverne Zoning Ordinance as it relates to the planned density residential, which is better known as PDR, zoning district. It did receive a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on November the 26th 2013. Ms. Kristen, you want to? I'll let Kristen take that one. Uh, Bruce? I'll let Kristen. Okay, um, Mayor uh, Alderman, in the, over the last few months, we had looked at some potential apartment projects for the city um, with a couple of different developers. They were proposed to be gated, uh, luxury apartments, high density, and in, dis in discussing with them how to accomplish. Um, getting these projects approved. We had recommended um, you know, that they would have to be an R3 zone. However, we were proposing that they would fall under the PDR district, the overlay, because it allows for flexibility and high design guidelines and produces a better product for the city overall. And in working with some of these um, developers, we, the further that we got into the uh, regulations, we realized that there was a an additional requirement in the PDR uh, regulations that limited to a maximum of 30% attached housing. And that would essentially mean that you can't have a high density luxury gated apartment in the PDR district. So I added some language that would essentially limit, it's, it still would limit the maximum of 30% unless the development is, is a private community with a homeowners association with a property management policy. So that way we can still have an R3 in the PDR and have a and ha have it and a high, you know, a high quality luxury gated apartment in the city. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them. And we've actually talked with, with two. Yeah, that are very interested in the higher end gated communities. And these would all be, you know, where you've got, um, you, ha you have to have so much uh, percentage of permanent open space. They would have common elements, um, you know, swimming pools, dog parks, potentially walking trails, tie into the greenway system. It's just that you can't really, and that's something that, we, of course, we would like to have here, but you can't actually, our regulations don't actually allow it the way it's written. So if we remove the 30% maximum, for the gated communities, we would still be protected as far as rezoning property to R3 high density, because I know sometimes that makes people a little bit nervous, but if you have the PDR overlaying it, then you have to, they have to follow a design guideline booklet. They're, you know, the rezoning is basically attached to the design guideline booklet so that if the, if somehow the development didn't come to fruition in the future, the city wouldn't be stuck with an R3 and a large R3, uh, you know, parcel that where anybody could come in and just and throw up some apartments. So, any questions? <coughs> questions? Okay. Next, resolution two thousand and thirteen. Dash 25, a resolution to amend the personnel policy and procedures manual regarding the nepotism policy. Mayor uh, Cheryl Evan and I have worked on this, this policy. Uh, there again, this is an item that's related to uh, the purchase of the fire department because we have several that work for the fire department currently that also have relatives that work here at Laverne. Uh, so in order to make that work, we needed to change our nepotism policy uh, so that there's not a conflict there. Uh, basically, the, the nepotism policy is the same. If, if it's uh, a family member of an elected official or a member of the city governing body, uh, we don't allow any uh, Im immediate family members to, to work for the city, uh, but it changes for basically the other 
classes of, of employees as far as full-time, part-time, or temporary. Uh, this does allow for immediate family members to, to work as long as you're not in a direct supervisory situation. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a situation where that arises, uh, there is an exception built into here uh, where the, myself, the city administrator, uh, can, can allow that uh, with, with human resources. Uh, and it's just depending on exceptional circumstances um, you know where special licenses or skills are required so there is there is an exception there uh, and you know just just read through this policy um, and it also discusses uh, if uh, the employees um, get into a, a relationship after employment a family relationship uh, and, and I don't know if Evan or, or Cheryl has anything else to add, but uh, you know, it, I think it'll do what we want it to do. Mm -hmm. And this has been a long time coming. And again, I want to reiterate the fact that this does not apply to the elected officials. Correct. As long as we are the elected officials, anyone sitting up here, your family member cannot work for the city. So it's not changing this board. So if there's any concerns that that's why we're changing it, it is not because as long as we're elected, our family members cannot work. So that takes us out of the equation. But I think as we're growing and we're going to continue to grow, our departments are continuing to grow. And since I've been elected, I've been <coughs> pretty adamant about I want the people in Laverne to get the job. If they're qualified, I want them to have the first opportunity to get the jobs that are available in the city. Um, I think we've missed good help, good workers, because somebody was Ken to Aunt Sally's great aunt down the you know, pike, but the policy did not allow that to happen because there was a, a, a relative. And um, I think this is gonna benefit the city and I don't think anyone should have any problems with it as long as the elected officials do not fall under this. I think that would have been the only, you know, concerns, as it should have been. And I think it'll get us really good help. We've got not only a police department now, we have a fire department that's going to be coming aboard. And in any walk of life, I think you want to follow in your, your parents' footsteps. And I think that should, you know, be offered to them, especially as we grow and our departments will grow. I think it's a, it's a good thing for the city. What's that? As long as there's not a direct, direct. supervisory. Well, <coughs> but that's but that's what we said though. The administrator and and HR can work on that. There is an exception if if yes. it's special need there, depending on who it is and and what it's for. No. <laughs> <laughs> And if anybody has any questions, feel free to give me a call or Cheryl a call. Exactly. We'll gladly talk to you about it. Any questions? Okay. Number 11, mm -hmm. discussion, approve an agreement between the City of Laverne and the Laverne Fire Department, Inc. to purchase the Laverne Fire Department, Inc. Mayor, I'll be happy to address that. Um, as board knows we've been working on a purchase agreement for the Laverne Fire Department mm -hmm. and have uh, created a working draft of that agreement. The city is being smart by being proactive mm -hmm. and uh, soliciting the uh, uh, approval and review of the Tennessee Comptroller's Office. That's ultimately the, the body or the organization that would govern this type of transaction. So in lieu of trying to do a contract first and then coming back later and asking the comptroller to bless it. We're being proactive about it and asking the comptroller to approve it going in on the front end. Uh, we, we today actually received some guidance from the comptroller's office that uh, is gonna cause us to need to tweak a little bit of what we're doing. And so uh, without going into too much detail, unless you wanna ask questions, which I'm happy to answer, we're gonna have to take some of the guidance we've gotten back from the comptroller and tweak our agreement a little bit to uh, to make sure that it complies with what they want us to do. It's not uh, it's not a roadblock, so it shouldn't be viewed in that aspect of it. It's simply 
Laverne wanted to do everything by the book and making sure that Absolutely. that's the way that it's done, and that's what we're doing. Absolutely. And no one other than Bruce, Evan, I think Phyllis, uh, Phyllis and MTAS has been working on this. I have not seen uh, the agreement. No one on the board has seen the agreement because they've had to go in working with, like I said, MTAS and Evan and trying to get all these stuff done. And actually, we just don't want it being out there until they feel very comfortable for us to actually sit down and view it. And, and it, it's going to change. You know, the, yes. the terms in here are going to change. Uh, we, we've actually, because of the feedback we received today, we have more questions to send back to the comptroller's office that we need to get some more answers on. So, you know, there is a time issue here as well. So uh, what we'll need to do is, is have a special meeting uh, maybe sometime next week or, or the week after. It just depends on when we get what feedback from the comptroller's office. So, you know, as soon as we get a, a draft that's, that's presentable to, to you guys, you know, we'll certainly forward that to everyone so it can be reviewed and, and hopefully get everything in place uh, in a good, timely fashion. Yeah, and we've asked once that y'all feel comfortable with it, you've got it down. Um, if they're going to try to get it to us two to three days prior mm -hmm. to our special call meeting. And we'll also give it to the fire department so that they, yes. Chief Gaffer can review it and, <laughs> and see if they have anything they have issues with. So And always happy to answer any questions you yeah. have when you get the agreement. Feel free to Excellent. Y'all have any questions? Now's the time to, right? to ask, or like I said, you may uh, feel free to call Bruce, Evan. If you have, and you may have some questions that you want to make sure that they've, they've looked into as well. But we are doing everything by the book. So when it comes audit, we're not going to have any problems whatsoever. We're pretty excited about it. Okay. I see no questions. We'll move on. Discussion General Power Contract with Middle Tennessee Electric <coughs> Membership Corporation to provide electricity to the Waldron Road pump station. Mayor of the Board, this is more of an informational item. Uh, this is a contract uh, between the city and Middle Tennessee Electric uh, to provide power for the uh, Waldron Road pump station. Uh, the city did go ahead and have the mayor sign it because there is a time issue in regards to getting this project going. Uh, the, the fees that are noted in here, the 11173 uh, it was included in the contract with the contractor. Uh, they have paid that fee. Uh, so as far as I know, everything is, is on the move for this project. We just wanted to bring this to your attention uh, that this was done. And I don't know that it needs any kind of approval. Mm -hmm. Any questions? All right. Next, discussion motion to remove the senior citizens program from the Parks and Recreation Department and create a new separate senior citizens department. I think they see Phyllis. Do y'all want to? Well, we, we met, the Senior Advisory Committee met again, and we discussed it again, and uh, the board wanted to make a motion that, that they be removed from the Parks and Rec Department and, and be a standalone entity, uh, maybe, you know, like for the retreat and things like that, they can go, they seem to think it'll benefit them as far as getting extra funding and, and things that they need for the Senior Center, and they kind of want to take ownership of it and do it themselves, and I think Bill has probably prepared some information for us. That Basically what I've got here is, is a copy of the um, budget that was approved for this current fiscal year. Based on giving you the historical background of the <coughs> what has transpired in the senior citizen um, department because we do have a special fund for them. But what is missing out of that is the um, wages and benefits of the employees that were have been be, being paid out of Parks and Rec. So if the board approves this, we'll have to transfer those people over to mm -hmm. the senior uh, citizen. And I, and I think it's, um, 
I roughly it was additional cost of it's not any additional cost it's just transferring from parks and rec to um, the senior line item um, it's going to appear to you know, <coughs> increase that budget probably about six, probably around sixty or seventy thousand dollars give or take some I think I think there are some additional issues we're going to have to look at uh, first of all you're creating a new department so essentially you're going to be creating a new department head so there's going to be some some monetary issues to work out there. Uh, my personal opinion, this would really be best if it uh, was held off on until the next budget year, so that we could plan accordingly uh, and have the new budget year start out with everything that we need to have done. Uh, also, I I know they think they're going to be eligible for more grants and things like that if they're out from under the Parks and Recreation Department. I really don't know if that's true or not, because uh, they're still going to be under the umbrella of the city in a way. Uh, so I mean, there, there's issues that we still need to look at, uh, but that's that's just my thoughts on on this item. And if you'll look at the, the sheet was passed out on the revenue page, um, there's a line item at the bottom that says surplus uh, or deficit, and you'll see where the library fund has been running at a deficit for the several years. And if you look at the next line down, you'll see where the bank balances have been over the past few years, and that includes the, the building fund. Mm -hmm. And, you know, projected a bank balance at the end of 13, 14 is right around $7,000, which is, you know, very, it's getting very, um, very, very slim. <coughs> as far as they're going to have to have some revenue source other than mm -hmm. the current revenue source to keep this department running. Um, because they're, you know, they're eventually not going to have a cash balance in that account. So either the city's going to have to contribute more or you're going to have to get more sponsors or get the sponsors to increase their grants. Mm -hmm. Because their expenses that keep going up. We have um, Mr. Don Lear who is on the advisory committee. Would you like to, to speak and tell uh, the advisories thought process uh, yes thank you for the invitation mayor and alderman uh, at, uh, at the, uh, the August I believe it was the August meeting with the, the our uh, board we we're informed that our building funds had been depleted which came as a complete uh, surprise to us when we went back researching what had happened is that for the previous two years, those funds have been transferred over in oper into our operating funds. Mm -hmm. We think that the commingling of people between the Parks and Recreation and the uh, Senior uh, Center, uh, Donna was working two jobs at times. Uh, we lost control of our finances. Mm -hmm. We think if we're a standalone entity we can control them as well as going out looking for sponsors. If we go for sponsors and there, we ask and it's for the parks and recreation slash the, the senior center, people figure they got enough money. If you go out with the seniors asking for money, they're more likely to give us some. We're working on that premise. It's, it's really as simple as that. We, we want better control of the monies that we're responsible for. As being a separate department, uh, head, uh, yeah, I think that would probably be advisory unless we went some way that was rather be an advisory board, we were uh, a approval board. Uh, as in a business, you would not have signature authority at the uh, current supervisory level unless it was approved by the board, something beyond $400, something like that. That's our general idea. No questions? Can we do, I, I saw Evan kind of going, uh. Yeah, I think before Tuesday, before Thursday night, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to have some time to think through that carefully and make sure okay. that's, we got the ability to do that. That is a question. I'm I mean, it's a good, good, it's very idea. good thought process. Sure, it certainly is. We just want to make Very sure. good. Yeah. But it's, sure it's stay within the confines of what we're of the law. But it's not like the library board that has specific statutes where they can do that sort right. of thing. That's a different you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm not sure that we can give 
that board that or that committee that kind that, of authority. That kind of authority. And I know Miss Green, unfortunately she, she's sick tonight, but I do know that she has worked hard on this as well. Very hard on wanting to to pull them out and uh, and do it a little person over it would have to be they're gonna be very confined to their, their budget. That's what we're asking for. Yeah. They're very confined to it. And I'll be honest, I've had, like, Miss Cook was over the senior. She was in that for years. And she never, I mean, she never could figure out why it was ever put under Parks and Rec to begin with. But they always had a standalone. Um, and if we could come up with some, um, how is, um, how is Yolanda classified now? What's her title? Coordinator, same coordinator. Essentially a supervisor position. Yeah. She, <laughs> she basically does the same thing that a director does. The only thing is certain things she comes and runs through me, you know, mm -hmm. and I sign off on things. But mm -hmm. basically, you know, she's she's doing, you know, what she'll be doing if uh, if they're standalone, you know, other than she won't be checking with me on some things. So, you know. Because like, like we've got in public works, your manager, <laughs> Cheryl, have you, have you looked into what that would be as far as um, the title there, if that would fall? I mean, my way of thinking, if it's, if she's doing it now, it would still be the same title with the same pay scale because she's not changing anything. She's not adding any additional staff. Or she's staff. not adding any additional staff. She's not adding any additional work. I mean, she's doing exactly, exactly what she's doing now. It would just eliminate a step having to come through me, for, yeah. you know, in our department. So. Yeah. It would just be a position that would floor its price to the city administrator. Mm -hmm. If it's an independent line item or on the department stands alone, mm -hmm. it will report straight to the city administrator. Mm -hmm. Unless it's designated to report the same <coughs> avenue. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that would be the best way mm -hmm. to go. Uh, the position title would not need to change unless it's designated that it would qualify to be mm -hmm. a managerial position, mm -hmm. which it is per se a managerial position, so it's a coordinator. It would just be looked upon to see if, unless the duties changed or uh, something was reclassified uh, to align it with other positions across the state or um, it, to um, mirror other municipalities, that would be the only concern. And we could do some research on that. Okay. And if the board does approve to do this, you know, then we'll have to do a, a budget amendment uh, to fix the issues there with the employees that are being paid out of Parks and Rec and move that over to that, to that separate uh, department. So there's several things that we, we need to look at. And, and, and it'll be, they'll, like I said, they'll have to manage because we found out any overtime was being pulled out of the Park and Rec's budget. It was not coming out of the senior budget. So, I mean, they're really going to have to adhere to, to budgets. And, and as far as Yolanda, that would be her, her job to make sure that, you know. Welcome the challenge. That's right. Have, I have I'll be available a week if you want to talk. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any, any questions or comments? Is it normal for, for uh, I mean, does Smyrna have their own senior citizen center? Um, do those any other? And are, and are they standalone departments? I mean, I think yeah, Murphy's Boroughs is standalone, if I'm not mistaken, because that's where everyone was asking us why. I know when Carol Cook was on the advisory committee, she could not understand why ours was ever put under Parks and Recreation, and you know, therefore, ever she was asking, "Why have y'all got that under you know Parks and Recreation?" I'm like, "I don't know. It was done before me." So, <laughs> I think it was done before I was ever alderman. 
So. Yeah, it was done in the mm -hmm. early to mid 90s, and mm -hmm. I don't know the reasons why exactly. And if I were guessing, I think it was because there was more money in Parks and Rec at that time. <coughs> I, I'm just guessing, looking at it, and it was just easier to throw it up under there and not have to, to deal with it. That's what I would think. Anyway, let's, we'll have some homework between now and Thursday. And if we get what we feel is good, adequate information to present to y'all, we'll move on with the motion. And uh, if we feel that there needs to be maybe just one more uh, month, we'll, we'll discuss that. Evan wants to check into some stuff. We'll check into the uh, coordinator, et cetera. But I, like I said, her jobs are not, it's not changing. She's not being given any more additional duties. So, but we'll get all this investigated and bring you back reports. If we don't feel that we're bringing back the adequate information or have it ready, we'll decide at that point what we want to do. Okay? Is that yeah, good? All right. We're down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Vice Mayor. Got nothing. I hear we got some congratulatories for you. <laughs> Gonna be a daddy again. June 28th. And I get full custody of Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Walden. I ain't got nothing. Okay. Alderman Booker? No. Well, I'm gonna brag a little bit. I hope everybody noticed, as if you walked in. Uh, back, I guess, about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, Kathy and I got to talking about wanting to enrich our history here in Laverne. Um, we got to thinking and we're the only city hall that did not honor our past mayors that I've ever been in. So we got busy, we sent out letters to all the families of the deceased ones. Uh, we did send out letters to the ones that are actually still with us. and. Um, we got pictures together. It took us some time to get all that information gathered and had them framed. And we're very proud. If you'll notice, it says honoring our past, building our future. And we're very proud and honored. And hopefully, maybe by January, get through the holidays, we'd like to do a little special reception, maybe at the January, and, and actually invite them or their families here and do a little unveiling for them. Um, I do know if uh, actually you're, I know you're going to look in and some of them, the first thing they said is, uh, why is Ms. Winfrey's frame different? Well, I am so pleased to tell you that that is the actual, that's the only picture that we had that was large, at that large, uh, that actually hung inside the city hall during her term. And when we got her, she got her letter and she actually brought this portrait to me and gave it to me uh, for this. And so I, I do want, we will invite her if I'm gonna let it be her choice, if she would like to have hers to match the others. But that's why it's very, very special to me uh, because she actually uh, gave that portrait to me and it was the actual portrait that hung in City Hall. So I'm big on sentimental, I'm big on history and that in itself was a piece of history because we didn't have any of the others this large. So therefore there was no framing. Um, we didn't actually have their pictures that actually hung in City Hall. So we were very, very proud of this piece of history that, that we brought to the city. I hope y'all are enjoying it and will enjoy it as much as we have. And it's a little way to say thank you to these men and women and their families and show a little honor to them. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I don't think, if, is there any, oh, Christmas parade, Saturday night. If you're in the parade, we line up at the park, five o'clock. The parade will start sharply at six o'clock. Bring your coats, bring your hoods. We're gonna have hot chocolate, we're gonna have cookies, Santa, fireworks, unless it is coming a monsoon. We will, 
If it's snowing, we're going to parade in the snow, unless the streets are we're impassable. <laughs> but we will have that parade unless it is absolutely pouring down rain. And I mean, it's going to have to come, like I said, a monsoon. If it's snowing, put your coats and hoods on, because we're going to be out there in that snow. That's right, that's right. Um, is there any other? I think I... I don't think I have anything between now and Thursday, do I? Do we? Am I forgetting anything? Okay, if not, I'm going to call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>